Okay, so we know there's a day for eternal judgment that will be one day when all of the earth will stand before God the judge. We got through down uh, page two of your lesson. Um, uh, it's kind of about uh, one third down. It says, "We'll all be condemned in the court." No, um, because anyone's name who is written in the uh, Lamb's Book of Life will not be con condemned. Those that trusted in Christ as their Savior, right? Okay. Um, will believers be judged for every every sin that they've ever committed? Absolutely not. We will only be judged for the sins which we have not repented from. Remember that. Okay. Then the next sentence. It is possible to depart from the faith. And Timothy says to Shipwreck that there's over 80 verses in the New Testament. People have taken uh, the word of God and they've turned it into a C's candy store. Where you go in and you pick and choose the candy you want. Are you a nuts and shoes kind of person or are you a fruit, right? And I'll just take those. But when you really read the New Testament, which under which we live, there are conditions attached to every promise. So we're not looking at the conditions that are attached to these promises, okay? Um, is it possible for names in the book of life to be blotted out as God made clear to Moses in Exodus? Yes, in the Old Testament, as well as the church, Revelation 3.5, 13.8, 2015, along with, you know, what, 80-some verses otherwise on that, okay? We can talk about in two weeks, if you want to talk a little bit more about Calvinism, the reformers, predestination, OSAS, we can talk about that then, you know, but I want to get through this today. Now, I've got, mm -hmm. how many questions are listed under your why? Is there six? Oh. Okay. All right. So, question I'm sorry. Wait. One, five. Three, five three, can I, four, let me see. Four, six. Six. We're on 22. There, yeah, there's six. Mine, Mine, are, two. Two. Mine are numbered and I have five. Okay. Five, three, really? Can I see six, yours yeah. really quick? Five, yeah. Um, does anyone else need 22? There are five answers. He okay, wait. Like one, two, three, four, five, six. Six questions. Oh, I see why we have to. Okay. So that's where I, I kind of messed up on that a little bit. All right, I've got six questions listed, and I only have five answers listed. Do you see that? All right, so. You did it on purpose to keep us in the <laughs> Exactly. All right, now question number one. Why does need, uh, Jesus need to return the answer to complete salvation in the saints? Number two, what did he not do on his first visit that requires a second visit to convert the Jews? Mm -hmm. Question number three, what will he do here on earth that he can't do from heaven to conquer the devil? Um, how long will he stay? Um, he will stay uh, forever. And the answer number four is, and to command the world. Okay, now. I really shouldn't have put this next question in there. Will there be another ascension or is his return permanent? I just answered that. He will stay forever. So we, I should really wipe that question out. Then the last question, number five, is why do we have to return to the earth with Christ? And it is to condemn the ungodly. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take each one of those questions. You have the answers right there in front of you. And we're going to talk a little bit more detail about these questions. Okay? So number one. Um, why does Jesus need to return? And the answer was to complete the saints. This is easy. Remember, salvation is a continuing process. That right there blows Osas out of the water. We're not once saved, always saved. Oh, we are being saved. And we've talked about that in, in Corinthians. It talks about that. Um, the process will be complete when every part of our being is restored into whose image? His image, right? We know that Hebrews says that Jesus, God's son, it says, is the exact representation of his being, right? But also it says in 1 John, we shall be like Jesus. We shall be like him. And I'm sorry, but we, whether you believe in OSS or not, just are not an exact representation yet. We still struggle with sin. We are being made into his image. Okay, and that's why Hebrews 9, 28, you might want to write that down, says he will come again not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. I'm eagerly waiting for Jesus because he's going to bring the rest of my salvation and make me complete. And so at last, I will, you will be saved. His first visit, he came to complete his work for us which was on the cross. On his second visit, he will complete his work in us, being remade from the inside out. A brand new spirit we've already received. Our soul-ish nature, our mind, will, and our emotions will be 100% complete and holy. 
and we'll get a new body. I am glad I'm not saved right now because I'm just getting older and older. I want to be in my prime, <laughs> right? Okay, so we'll find, he will finally see the results of all his sufferings and he'll be satisfied, okay? It's important to remember that God, our creator, wanted a physical universe and he intended for human beings to have physical bodies. But of course, rebellion, angelic and human rebellion, ruined it. God intends to redeem it. And that's why salvation transforms every part of us, not just our spirit part. It transforms our physical. Adam was made from the outside and completed on the inside. The new creation in Christ Jesus has new insides, and it will com be complete when we get our new outsides. So right now, for all of us in this room, we're frustrated because we're all half saved. And that's a frustrating tension, that's a, a tension type of life because our insides have been made new into the image of Christ Jesus, but we struggle with the sin that's hanging on the outside of us, right? We struggle with sin. We do, every one of us do. So it's true, when we die, there is some relief that's brought to us because we're with Christ, right? We are with Christ in his presence, but Paul says, but we're unclothed. And we're away from the body. That's why we are eagerly waiting for salvation. That means that those are with Jesus right now. Even though they're in the presence of Jesus and they don't have the tension of sin, right? They're, they still feel a little incomplete. And it's not painful, but they know, oh, there's just something more that we're waiting for. And that's that new body that we all get on the same day when he comes back. Do you understand that? Okay, what was that Hebrew uh, verse that said? Hebrews 9, 28. Oh. And our, so that's what's happening. Our, our um, spirit right now is um, longing for the new body. And same with the spirits of the saints in heaven. Moses is longing for his new body right now. Oh, and, and, and Abraham and all of the others, okay? But why in the world can't we, if we die today, and we go to be with Jesus in heaven... Why can we not receive our new bodies in heaven? Because the Bible says it's going to happen just within a flash and a twinkling of an eye. Why do we have to wait to receive our new bodies together all at once? Right? Why do we have to do that? Simply because we don't need physical bodies in a heavenly place. Physical bodies were made for where? The earth. Right? Heaven is a place for spiritual bodies. The Bible tells us that God is spirit. Angels are ministering spirits. So heaven is a spiritual place. Heavenly Jerusalem right now is crowded with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. That's what Hebrews said. But they're unclothed. They're waiting for a body. But they don't need a body up there. But when they come back to earth, they're going to need a body. The Son of God had to be enfleshed. And the word for enflesh is incarnate. He was incarnate. A body you have prepared for me. That's what Jesus said. Angels, if they want to be um, uh, made aware to people, okay, then they have to assume a body. Because we don't see in the spiritual dimension. With what I was going to say, our, our angels here are... There are They're in the angels. heavenly realms, okay. but, but remember, sometimes an angel might appear, and that's what Hebrews said, be hospitable. You never know that you are not, right, entertaining. entertaining angels. Well, you're not, if you're going to entertain and be hospitable, that means you're going to say, come in and sit down. The bathroom is right there. May I get you a drink? May I make you a meal? You do that for a physical body. That means angels have the ability to take on a human body because we are human. We are limited. And we see in this dimension, we can't look, right now, if we could look up, if we could see in the spirit realm, which we can't with our human bodies, we would see a war going on right above us with the good and the evil angels, right? We would see that, but we can't see it. We know it by faith. We see it with our spiritual eyes by faith, but we can't literally see what angels look like in the spirit realm. However, those that are with Christ Jesus right now, they see it, right? They're in the spirit realm, right? They don't need bodies for the spirit realm. But when they come back to earth, we need bodies to be on earth. And think about it. That means that um, 
uh, we're going to be fit, the saints are going to be fit with a brand new body like Jesus's body, which means we're really predominantly meant to live where? Here on earth. Do we, will we have access to the heaven, heavenlies? Yes, we're going to have a body like Jesus, and we know Jesus's body could do what? It could ascend. Okay, so we will be able to do that kind of things. We'll be able to go up into the heavenlies, even into the third heaven. But predominantly, when God made us, humanity, man, in his image, his intention was for man to do what? To be on the earth. That's what his intention was. And the Bible says that one day, the whole entire earth is going to be his sanctuary, his temple. Right now, it's enemy territory. Who's the prince of this earth right now? Satan. Satan, exactly. And he's going to be dealt with. And once he's dealt with, Jesus is going to come back here in his new body, and he is going to rule and reign from Jerusalem. Do you see that? He's going to reign over the whole entire earth, and we are going to rule and reign with him in our new bodies as well. Do you think that, I mean, is, is the, or do you have a thought of whether the earth is going to be like the same I, physical earth or is it going to be like that's a great question and a uh, that's a great question that? i think that during the millennium the thousand years as soon as jesus comes back and establishes his kingdom on earth i think that this earth as it is right now as we see it is going to be restored restored mm -hmm. not yet made new restored back to pretty much what the garden of eden was mm -hmm. really beautiful mm -hmm. you know but the at the end of the thousand years after judgment the heavens and the earth are going to roll up and God's going to be done with them like an old garment and he's going to make a brand new heaven and a brand new earth. Now that's where the imagination has to take off. What do I think personally? I think it's going to be a combination of vegetative earth like it is here now but also a very beautiful mineral earth before right. Satan right. fell with all the beautiful sparkling mountains. Now all the gems are where? They're inside the mountain from the rebellion, right? When he exploded everything. And judgment was cast upon the earth. So we have to mine for granite. We have to mine for diamonds and beautiful stones. But before that, it was just sparkling everywhere. It was a mineral earth. I think it's going to be a combination. And then I think on top of that, there's going to be something else that, because God is so imaginative and so creative, maybe even all sorts of other things that we're just going to be like, whoa. It makes me wonder, I mean, I don't know. It makes me wonder because God has been forever. That's right. Like, there is no beginning. There, God, and so who's to say that this that's happening now didn't happen before? What, what what's happening? Like I mean, the whole this whole from our beginning of the Bible. Okay. That it's right. happened a whole other time. Yeah. <clears throat> well, maybe I, mean, I, I don't know. It, right. Let's we don't your, know. Let me make sure mine is and, and, Oh, I know. You can get a headache with eternal <laughs> thinking. There's no doubt about it. And maybe he did. Um, it would be hard for me to think about God sacrificing His Son for you know over right. and over again. Um, right, 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 right. And the word I believe is complete, and I believe it does give us from the very beginning to the very end, yeah. eternity past to eternity future, where time is in between there. There's so much we don't know. Right. We know right now what we need to know, and that's what we True. just have to solve. True. So, You're right. <laughs> in your in your mind, how do you feel that when we die, we know the people that yes. we're in love with? How do you, how do we? I mean, if they don't have bodies, we know in part now. Mm -hmm. We know in part now. The Bible says, mm -hmm. but when we see him, we will know in full. Our minds will be opened up. We will understand. We will have an understanding. We will be like Jesus. He knows everybody. We will know everybody, Come everything. We will know what they were in our past. Oh, he was my, you know, second cousin once removed, who is my brother and who's part of the bride. Because we'll I don't know even all remember that. what they used to look like, the ones that have died. You know, I, I love my grandmother. But right, I but I don't know exactly what Moses yeah. looked like. Yeah. It, was it Charlton Heston when he came down? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't exactly like that, but we will know. Okay. Okay, we will know. Okay, that's just how it is. It's not going to be based on looks. And uh, we're just going to know each other, you know. And we Again, won't know until the part. second, till he comes. Well, I, if you were to die tonight and you were to be with Jesus, you know, you I believe that you, you will know. Yeah. Your people. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Not only... 
God's people. That your people is the redeemed right, right. of the whole earth. Right. You will know, you will see Abel, and you'll go, Abel, oh. Enoch, and Methuselah, <laughs> you know? Oh, oh dude. You know, he said, pronounce his right. name right. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. You'll have all that. <laughs> so, so basically, no Alzheimer's. Right. <laughs> That's a part of disease. Oh, it's a supernatural thing. You'll know everybody because it's going to be supernatural. Right. It'll, exactly. it'll be like them having a name tag. <laughs> so, and, except that you know. So, you just yeah. know. Exactly. Did you see that movie of the little boy that went to heaven? Yes. And then he knew who his pop pop was and his. Do you know what movie I'm talking yes. about? Yes. Yeah. 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 Heaven is for heaven real. Is for real. Yeah. Yeah. Knew yeah. the baby that was. But he has come out. Yeah. His sister. Yeah, but you know, he came out and said that he made a lot of that up. Oh, did he? Oh, he did? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that was a. a you you got to be careful with all of that kind of stuff. With, with yeah. that. But, anyways, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. But, anyways, okay, let's go on. Number two, because we got to get all of this stuff done. Um, wait, this goes here. I turned the wrong page over, I think. Yeah. Number two, why did, what did he not do in his first visit that requires a second visit, okay, to convert the Jews? God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and his descendants, and that covenant is eternal or everlasting. And God later spelled out what that would mean in Leviticus. He says, I will not cancel my covenant with them by wiping them out. Wiping them out means totally. Um, for I am the Lord their God. So even though God did scatter the Jews among the nations when they broke their part of the covenant, God had already promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that he would not break his part of the covenant, that he would bring them back. Now, that doesn't mean that many, many of them are lost. Many, many of them are lost, okay? But Paul teaches in Romans 11 that God has not rejected them. Only some of the branches of the olive tree, Israel, have been broken off and replaced, and we've been grafted in as Gentiles. All Jews can be grafted back in if they believe in Messiah. Now, if God allows them to be cut off by unbelief, right, then he also says, but if they come back and believe in me, they can be grafted back in. And Paul addresses Osas the most strongly in Romans 11 because he says, don't get conceited because you Gentiles have been grafted into that tree. Because if you stop believing, ooh, there it is. If you stop believing, you can too be cut off. How much easier is it to graph in an original you know, branch than it is a wild olive branch? It's much easier. So we are warned to be very, very careful, okay? All right. So the hardening of their heart has been brought on by God against the gospel. But that hardening is only partial and it's only temporary. Let me talk about the partial. It's a, it's a blinding, it's a veil that's been put over their eyes partially, but not so much so that they can't seek. Any Jew today that really wants to seek and really wants to know, if he will seek with an open heart, God will make himself available to him. He will, he will reveal himself to him, and then that Jew has the choice as to whether to say, no, thank you, or yeah, I want you, okay? The other part of that veil that's been um, surgically and spiritually placed over their eyes is temporary. And it says in Romans, until, until when? Until the full number of the Gentiles have come in. Then at that point, the veil will be lifted from their minds, and so all Israel will be saved. Okay? It talks about Zechariah in the Old Testament. He says, uh, for the Lord speaks through him and says, I will pour out a spirit of grace. Okay, that's favor and love. And they will look on me, the one whom they pierced, and they will mourn. We have been given that spirit of grace. That spirit of grace has been poured out on us in this room. And we look at Jesus as the one we pierced. And we mourn. Why do we look up on? Because it was our sin that put him on that cross. Do you see that? But there's going to be a day when a spirit of grace is going to be poured out upon Israel and they will open their, the, the, the veil will be removed. They'll open, they'll see, and they'll go, wow. Is that like that's one? when Jesus returns. returns yes. Okay. Yes. So right now, both Jews and Gentiles who do believe in Jesus. They come into the same salvation 
through the same Savior. And the Savior's name is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, right? Or Jesus Christ, all right? Uh, Jesus said in John, he said, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. Well, he was in Israel. He was talking about, I have other sheep outside of the Israeli sheep pen. I must bring them in also. That was the Gentiles that he was speaking of, okay? All right, next question, number three. Um, uh, what's the question? Let's see. What will he do here on earth that he cannot do from heaven? And that is to conquer the devil. Listen, evil is not an abstract noun. And it's been turned into that, and I hate that. Evil is personal. Evil is not impersonal. It describes creatures. Creatures, not things. Creatures who rebel against their creator and do things their way instead of his way. That is evil. It's personal. Okay? God created beings capable of becoming evil by their own free choice. And the result of that free choice is we've got evil angels, right? They're the creatures created by God. And we've got evil um, human beings because they've chosen not to do it their creator's way, their own way, okay? And what that has ended up happening and doing is creating two kingdoms on earth. There is the kingdom of light and there is the kingdom of darkness. And you know what? It's growing up side by side. If this was a wheat field, right? The wheat and the tares are growing together. And the funny thing about tares and wheat, okay, is tares, I think that the Hebrew word was darnel or something like that for tares. And believe it or not, if this was a genuine wheat, this might have been a tear <coughs> wheat, but you had to have a very educated mind as a farmer. You had to really know the difference, almost like today. Probably people could present us with pretty decent counterfeit money and we wouldn't be able to tell the difference. We would be able to, if they gave us monopoly money, but that's not the picture here. Here's a US dollar bill and here's a monopoly dollar bill. Nothing like that. It's really well done counterfeit bills, okay? And the tares is growing up along with the wheat, the genuine and the counterfeit. And the counterfeit, it's amazing. It looks like the genuine. And that's why the disciples said to Jesus, should we go through and start you know, plucking up the weeds in the fields then? Should we start getting rid of them? says no that's for my angels to do it's not for you to do it's going to grow up it's just going to keep growing and it's kind of come more and more what what happens as wheat comes well wheat comes up as a sprout first and then it gets like a bud and then it gets the seeds inside to make it wheat and it, it's it's full it's full of nutrients it's full but so is the the the, the tares they get it's not really wheat but it's full of iniquity it's it's full of evil and so everything is coming up and we're getting to toward the end of time where the fullness of the wheat and the tares is coming to the very end. And that's why it's going to be very distinct. It's not going to be so gray anymore. There's been too much gray. It's going to be very, very evil. Okay. The kingdom of darkness is going to become very, very evil, more and more and more demonic. There was a massive, huge conference in Scottsdale this last week yeah, for the Sa Satan Conference mm -hmm. in Scottsdale, yeah. major, major. Satan Con. And then there's there's uh, uh, after school clubs yeah. now. It's, it's called Satan Con. Satan Con. Yeah. Conference, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's the after school clubs now, or the Satan clubs yeah. for children yeah. in schools. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and it's becoming very very evil. This is why the kingdom of light needs to have the power of Holy Spirit. Because we need to just be a light that shines in the last days, okay? And so that, well, that's where you say and that's you why this is going to just continue growing side by side. But there's coming a day, and Jesus talks about it in Matthew, where there will be a separation, and God is going to call a halt to evil at some point in time. Because why? Because Satan's days are numbered. And when Jesus returns, Satan must leave. All men who are evil are going to be destroyed, those that have taken the mark of the beast. Satan will be banished for a thousand years. He will be kept in solitary confinement, no, able, no longer able to influence, okay? That is coming to an end, and that's when we have the 
the thousand years, yeah. Chaff is the same as a tear, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The chaff is well the chaff is is the the outside of the wheat inside. You don't eat the chaff. But That's sometimes it says chaff, chaff and yeah. sometimes it says tear. Yeah, the tears are the weeds. The chaff is the outside, what looks like but isn't true on the inside. So if you've ever seen old wheat, you know, there's like a shell around the inside of the wheat. Like remember when the disciples were walking through yeah. the fields and yeah. they were harvesting with the Pharisees because they had to open the, the top of that thing. That was the chaff. They got the chaff off and then they got the wheat outside of the chaff. And the Pharisees said, they're working, they're working on the Sabbath, okay? So it is a throwaway part. So is it a, uh, are the words synonymous? Kind of in the sense that it's... We'll use chaff and some tear. So do we read it as the same thing? Yeah, you can because both are going to be thrown away. Got it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, oh, uh, let's see, um, hmm. what, I'm trying to think of a vegetable out there that we never, ever, ever eat the, the, the skin of it, what would be, well, a yeah. corn. Yeah, corn. corn. Okay, got it, right. To so, get to the so corn. chaff and tear is the same as the husk and, on corn. No, no? a tear is the a, a actual weed, that, a weed that looks exactly like the real thing, but the chaff is also the outside of the seeds, and you throw that away, right? You don't never eat that. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go on to the next one. How, uh, what is the question? Um, how long will he stay? Okay. Well, obviously he will stay forever and ever. Um, and why is he coming? Well, the answer is he's coming to command the world. Matthew 6.10 tells Jesus' followers to pray every single day that God's kingdom, his rule will come on earth as it is in heaven. Right? You know that prayer. This will be answered at Jesus' return, as well as locking Satan up. Jesus is coming back to do what? To reign over the earth. Not just to complete us in our salvation. Not just to convert the Jews. And not just to conquer the devil. He's also coming to rule over the earth. Do you see that? How it all comes together? Now, in Revelations 20... The reign of Christ follows his return. So Jesus comes back, then the reign of Christ, and all of that precedes this day of judgment a thousand years later. Okay, and the Hebrew prophets look forward to this day like crazy. When believers will rule and reign with Christ on the earth. That's going to be exciting. And I believe that's coming soon. So what, what do you feel can will happen with the Holy Spirit at that time that uh, Jesus is ruling. Well, he's with us. That so, that's what is. I well, know, I don't think he'll ever not be job. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, to give us power to rule and to reign. Still, we are incomplete without Christ. We will never. That we. You think about it like this: Adam and Eve before the fall, they lived in perfect perfection because they were dependent on Holy Spirit. God. Right. Okay. Okay. They were dependent. Mm -hmm. When did everything blow up and go bad? Hmm. In no, in their choice um, of independence. We can't act outside God. We're made in His image for Him. We've learned in Him. Okay, we'll never be of ourselves. We will always recognize our failures and our frailty. We'll never forget it. We will always look upon Jesus forever and ever as our Redeemer and as our Savior and as our King. It's because of Him that we're here. So we'll we'll never terrified. ever stop realizing that and giving him praise for that and worshiping who he is that will never stop but if they were made in god's image how were they able to be deceived that she was deceived he was not ha see <laughs> they were given a free will they, they were deceived. creatures so were the angels god did never made robots he never wanted people to have to love him Never. But that goes away. Right. We're free. When we're eight, eight, eight. The probationary period of being tested is over. Probation is a testing period. This is our testing period. And that's why people who are on probation, they need to be very careful, right? Mm -hmm. They need to be very, very careful. We need to be careful. But probation will come to an end. Right? And we won't want to do evil. We will know good and well. Think about it like this. you got a road, and this is what man and his evil does. This road is perfect. This is perfection. And evil is getting off going your own way. 
But every time you go off in every possible direction, it's a dead end, dead end, dead end. It's death, it's death at the end of that road. But over here, you stay on this road and it's life. And all of us who are eternally with Christ Jesus, we're going to very well understand this, that that led to, and every one of us fell short. Every one of us went our own way. Every single one of us. And we ended up at a what? A dead end. It's nothing without. We are dependent upon him. Okay? All right. Um, okay, now let's do this last one. Uh, will there be another ascension or or um, is his return permanent? It's permanent because he's going to rule and reign here on earth. So why do we have to return to earth with Christ? In other words, if we were to die today, because Jesus hasn't come back yet, the saints who are with him right now are going to come back with him to earth. And so why do the saints need to return with him to Christ? And the answer to that is, listen to this, to condemn now the word condemn comes into play. Not convict. Now it's condemn. To condemn who? The ungodly. This is what eternal judgment is about in a nutshell. Time will conclude with the day of judgment. Okay? Remember time. This is super important. This is what the whole course, Foundations 1, was about to help you to understand. Okay? Okay? You had eternity past. The line goes on forever and ever, and we have eternity life. Future, remember? Right. Okay. And sandwiched in between those two things is that. I know you can't see it, but that little red dot right there represents, from God's point of view, in fact, it's even smaller than that red dot, time. Now, if we were to do like what we do on our phones and we stretch this whole thing out, right? We stretch it all the way. We let's stretch time out. There was a point in eternity past where time began. But that also means that there's a point where time will what? Mm -hmm. End. And in between there is, this is time. You got eternity past, you got eternity future, and time. What's another word for time? Conflict. Time. Because what happened at the beginning of time was that one of the creatures got off of depending on God and went his own way. That's when Satan tried to rob and grab at the throne of God. That's when time came in, right? Mm -hmm. And then eventually what happened? Adam. And then what, what, what he went to cross, and then us, okay, right? And on the day of judgment, you've got the thousand years right here, and on eternal judgment, when all of the wicked are vomited up before Jesus, and everybody is standing before Jesus, and everything is done, and, we're, and this is earth, we're back on earth, because this is happening on earth, Time will finally come to an end because everything will be dealt with. All rebellion. Another word for conflict, a more accurate word, would be rebellion. Conflict, we like to blame on others. Rebellion is all about us and our rebellion against God. Time will conclude with a day of judgment. Time began, it was inaugurated by an act of rebellion. Time will conclude or consummate with the day of judgment. Why? Because the injustice of life demands it. And the justice of God demands it. He would not be a good God if injustices were left. If God is king of the universe, then that carries with it a responsibility to be a good judge. And a good judge will say, that right there is bad. That is is bad that is bad and that is bad and that must be judged and that must be judged and that must be judged and I will judge it and that goes to every single one of us except that we are under the blood of Christ Christ took our judgment he didn't just get us off he took the judgment of God for us do you see that always keep that in mind but why just one day for judgment why just one day? Huh. Well, why isn't each and every single person, whether they're in hell, waiting for 
this day of judgment and all of the believers in heaven why didn't we all just get judged as we are dying here's why and this is profound there's three reasons why each person is not judged at the moment of death but is kept waiting until the whole human race stands together and the word is there's three reasons but it's the same word vindication not revenge vindication there's a difference people get condemnation and conviction mixed up and people get uh, revenge and uh, vindication mixed up we're not to take revenge that's to be left in god's hands and he will but vindication what is vindication to you to be vindicated is what made right but to, to to for the true genuine truth to come out okay Here's the three reasons why we all do judgment on one day. God must be, listen to this, publicly vindicated. Um, Isn't that neat? Um, God must be seen in all creation, angelic and human, that his decisions about our destiny and the angel's destiny are right. Because God has so often been accused of being unfair. These criticisms will be put and silenced on the day of judgment that God is right, God is not wrong. And guess what? All of creation, even those vomited up, they will have to be silenced and they will also say along with Abraham, will not the judge of all the earth do right? And as they're getting ready to be tossed into the lake of fire, they will say, it is right. Jesus is Lord. Boom. Eternity in the lake of fire. Wow. Okay, that's one reason. God must be vindicated. What's the second reason? Oh, because Jesus must also be publicly vindicated. Now think about this. His execution on the cross was the greatest injustice of all. The last sight that the world ever had of him was as a criminal in disgrace. Was he a criminal in disgrace? No. So every single human being and every angel must witness a reversal of that verdict. Jesus is Lord. Jesus wasn't a criminal. Jesus was right. And every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus, Christ Jesus gets it. So God is vindicated publicly in front of all creation. Jesus is publicly vindicated in front of all creation. So then there's one last thing. Yes, you're going to love this one. The Lord's people must also be publicly vindicated. Hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Those whom Jesus is not ashamed to call his brothers and sisters are to be honored in the presence of those who treated them with contempt. Now, I want you to think about all of the people in your life that have made fun of you or have had contempt for you because you stand with Christ. And eventually, maybe they'll never turn to Christ. I hope they do. That's what we hope for. That's what we pray for. That's what we strive for. But there will be some that absolutely will not turn to Christ. We know that. And they are being kept right now in Sheol Hades. They will be vomited it up. And they will be made to see that God was right. And he's vindicated. I was wrong. You're right. See, repentance is going to be forced on everybody. You can you can um, voluntarily repent now, or you can be forced to repent later. Jesus was right. I was wrong. Oh, my friend who I made fun of, and I got him fired from their job, and I did all of this, that, and the other to them. They were right. I am wrong. I want you to think about all the beheadings that are happening even today. The people who behead others because they will not denounce Christ. Mm -hmm. Think of all your brothers and sisters in the early church that were burned at the stake or thrown to the lions. The heinous, heinous evils that men who are there right now and did not repent have done to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus is going to say, and now on that final day of judgment, they also get vindicated. Isn't that beautiful? There will be vindication. That is why eternal judgment, and believe it or not, that brings us to the end of the foundation. Wow. Yay, right? Thank you, Lord.
God is our past, our present, and our future. Let's pray. Lord, thank you 